And welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today we're going to talk about the beautiful Crockett and Jones Westbourne compared to the Loke Trinity uh, as part of the Loke 1880 export grade range. Uh, this is going to look at a variety of areas from the different shoes. Hopefully, you'll find this of value. Please let me know if there's anything we can do to make the videos better. Hey, I've organized all my playlists on this channel so that you're able to easily find different types of shoes, different brands of shoes, as well as uh, finding all my shoe battles, uh, worth the price shoe reviews, etc., all in one place. Enjoy. Welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today we're going to talk about a shoe battle between two very special shoes for me. Uh, the first one is the Loke Trinity, uh, which is in this beautiful uh, burnished tan. Uh, they call it deep mahogany. And uh, this is a Adelaide uh, semi-brogue uh, with a cap toe, a uh, U-throat, um, and has the brogue lines, uh, the, the heel counter. Um, uh, just a beautiful way of doing a shoe. Um, this is on an almond last and uh, just has a, a really good solid structure, more traditional structure. And then I'm comparing it to uh, what is probably the single best uh, example of a British Adelaide in my collection uh, is the Crockett and Jones Westbourne. Now the Crockett and Jones uh, has a, and why do I say that it's the single best? I have some really fantastic, um, it's fantastic shoes, but, but what makes this one of the best? Well, Crockett and Jones um, is the, what I would consider to be, and this is part of the Crockett and Jones main line. I have hand grade trees in it, but it is a main line shoe. The, um, this shoe represents to me uh, what is the standard of using high grade leather, uh, beautiful craftsmanship and, um, and good solid structure in the way that they're doing it without the um, accoutrements of what I would consider to be the high end. Um, so when you get into the hand grade, when you get into the Gaziano and Girlings, the George Cleverleys, uh, the John Lobs, um, you know, they're, they're doing extra pieces in or, and the Edward Greens, right? They're doing extra steps in order to make the shoes beautiful, in order to make the shoes last. Here, uh, with Crockett and Jones, they obviously, they're very concerned with uh, beautifying the shoes. They're very concerned with how well they last, but they they really want to make a good, solid factory-made shoe that will last forever. And that's their, um, that that is the, the primary standard. Now, they are also extraordinarily uh, attentive to detail. And I think that that really comes across as we, as we look at how this uh, lays out next to uh, the Loke, which is part of the 1880 export grade and the top of the line of what Loke produces. So if we, you think about, um, you know, from a price category, um, these are going to run 360 pounds uh, with VAT. So if, if you just look at a, a website in the UK that has both, um, this is going to be 360 pounds. Um, and, and it's a very, very nice shoe, beautiful shoe. Um, but the uh, Crockett and Jones, this is going to run um, 465 pounds, so 105 pounds more. Um, and I'm just uh, searching here to, to jump to the other uh, um, to, to the website just as I'm making sure because I really want to be right when I say that. Now, sales, you can find these on sales. Uh, there are a lot of dealers who, who represent Crockett and Jones, just as there are a lot of dealers that represent um, Loke. So um, I was talking to a gentleman this uh, this evening in um, in Norway who said that he saw these exact shoes on sale in Norway for around two hundred and fifty dollars U.S. Um, so they can be found for for great buys. And candidly, if you can find this shoe for that price, buy it. Okay? It's 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 a tremendous value for for what you get there. Um, so, but what I want to do is I want to talk about the quality of the leather, the quality of the lining. I'm going to talk about the design, really what makes them different, um, and then what I think makes them great. And then we'll get into some qualitative or quantitative details 
Um, so first we're going to talk about qualitative, then we're going to talk about quantitative and get into some of the measurements on what makes, um, uh, you know, what are visible differences that you'll be able to see um, that, that get us to where we go. So, uh, but before we go there, let's just talk about some things that they have in common, right? They are both Adelaide's. Now, if you look at the coloring on the um, on the Westbourne, you'll notice that it has some burnishing around the uh, around the brogue line. Please do not take points away from Loc for this. This is something I did just to, in as part of my polishing, and I don't have a super high shine on either of them. They're they're both kind of a uh, functional shine. Uh, the um, um, I did uh, refresh the shine here um, uh, for this week because I plan on wearing them. Uh, the Lokes actually are about on wear four, so they're not ready for, uh, for, for refresh shine yet. So I just brushed them up, okay? So um, both Adelaide's, both cap toes, okay? Um, both have open channel soles, okay? Uh, the one big difference um, from a last perspective is that the Loke is on, a, uh, the Loke is on an almond last, and the um, uh, Crockett and Jones is on a chisel last, okay? So, and uh, if you just look at it, you can see this looks more like a chisel and that looks more rounded, right? Okay. Um, they're both 270 degree welt. They both have um, heels that are relatively close to the shoe, okay? Um, now the, um, and that is uh, where we're going to stop with the similarities. Um, from there, um, let's talk about what is different. Um, the Loke. This has uh, what they call a bevel waist. They might call it a fiddleback waist. Uh, there's a lot of discrepancy in how the, the shoe market um, refers to this. I call this a bevel waist. And um, it uh, adds a little bit of um, support. You know, you can kind of feel it a little bit when you're walking. And it's, um, uh, it, it's a nice uh, extra. Um, th this has that. When you look at the nail pattern in the heel, it is, um, a little different, but not remarkably so, okay? Uh, when we look at the measurements later, we're gonna see one of these has a much narrower waist and a narrower heel, okay? Um, you're going to see that um, uh, one has a longer cap, okay? And uh, what's interesting about this is that um, they are different sizes, um, but the, um, so this is a nine and a half. I take a, a 10 in the Loke. You can see from a width perspective, the Loke is, or the, the I take a 10 in the Crockett and Jones and a nine and a half in the Loke. Uh, you can see from a width perspective that the Crockett and Jones is actually the same width, which is what's important to me because if it was any narrower, I wouldn't be able to wear it. Um, and uh, it's elongated in the toe, meaning that it's a little bit longer Okay, but your foot is not supposed to be longer in order to do that. Your foot is still gonna be your foot and it's only gonna fit so high because they make it so narrow up at the front here. They know they don't expect your feet to actually fit into that, okay? Um, what is different? Look at the size of the broguing. The broguing on the Crockett and Jones is considerably smaller, okay? Now, is that a mark of quality? Not necessarily, I would call that design because it's really just a different tool that they're using in order to make the broguing. Um, if you look at, they both lack a medallion. So that's a consistent piece of how they do it. They both are tied at the um, facing the same way. Uh, they both have a quite narrow top of the facing, okay? Now, um, the other side. Now, when you look at really high-end shoes, um, one of the things that you'll notice is that um, the, and it's easier to look this way, um, uh, the top line can actually be a little bit higher on the inside than it is on the outside. Now, this is very, very close. I would say it's barely different, if different at all, okay? Okay, and if we look here, again, barely different, if different at all, okay? You can see it's also different in a different place, which I think is also interesting, right? Um, so let's look at the leather. Look at how the leather creases after about a year of wear. Right? Um, I would call that micro creasing. And this is a, a standard of very, very high quality leather uh, that it does not um, crease badly. 
we look at the uh, Crockett and Jones, and that is very, very similar. And these are a little bit older. So again, I would say very, very similar. Okay. Uh, when we look at the, uh, the um, sky beam, okay, um, when they put the cap on and they get it so that it's close, okay, you can feel that there's a little bit of a gap here, but it's actually quite small. Okay. And, and the, uh, the level that they use here is uh, pretty well. So they, they actually skive this pretty tight. It's not always the case. Um, and when we look here, um, it may be a little bit tighter, but not very much. Okay? So it is uh, very good. Now, from a design standpoint, they have pretty large pinking here. And pretty tight pinking here. Okay. Again, that's design. That has nothing to do with quality. It's just a different scissor, basically, that they're using in order to cut. Okay. Um, from a uh, lace perspective, these laces are even. Right? They're all the same length. These laces are a little bit beveled, okay? meaning that they're expecting you to have the shoes a little bit tighter so that you have more of a V-gap here, and then the laces will look even. Okay? A lot of shoemakers will do this in the, in the higher end, okay? and you'll see it in, in Carmina and in TLB Mallorca and some of those. Uh, the reason that they do this is because the laces can look really, really big if everything's even and you have a, a V gap and the laces go like that, okay? That can make it, uh, it can draw your eye to it. And, and a lot of shoe designers consider that to be ugly. Um, if you look at the tongue, you can see that this has a little bit of area here above the tongue, nothing on the side, okay? Or no, this does have it on the side, you see that? So this has leather sticking out above the lining of the tongue um, that, that is just out there um, uh, sitting in the, in the tongue. I don't like that personally. That, that's a, a pet peeve of mine. Um, when we look at the, uh, the loke, um, they, they have that. They don't have it on the sides very much. They have it a little bit, uh, but they have quite a bit here at the top of the tongue. Okay. And again, some people like that because they feel like it's too stiff up at the top line. Other people like me don't like that because they feel like it's a little bit flimsy or, or feels a little bit, um, you know, they, I just don't like the way it feels. So that that is another area that we would look at. So now as we um, really examine the shoe, um, you'll see that um, this has an iron here and it has the little groove at the top of the welt and the groove at the bottom, okay? And then it has a small bevel here and then a really good iron around, around the heel, okay? Okay, with the details. So from a finishing standpoint, that's pretty nice. You'll also note there is no fudging on the top of the weld. Now fudging can, can look really nice. And for more casual shoes, uh, can sometimes be overdone. And so, you know, you'll see a lot of, uh, you know, shoes with grains or things like that where they, where a shoemaker will just not do any. Uh, but this is a dress shoe. And uh, that is something that I would say is notably missing. Uh, now, when we look at the Crockett and Jones, okay, you'll see there is quite a lot, okay? As a matter of fact, if you look in closer, you will see that the stitching on these shoes is very, very deep set. You can barely see it, okay, in there. It is there. All right. But when I did the pictures for the stitch density, which you'll see later, <laughs> I used those because you can see it a lot better. Okay. Um, but this has this uh, beautiful fudging and it's got the fudge. Somebody went in here and got into these little itty bitty crevice with the fudge wheel to do that finishing touch, which for dress shoes, in my opinion, makes a difference. It, it just makes it a little bit easier to, uh, um, uh, you know, it just sets the tone of the soul a little bit apart, and and I like that. I think that that's a that's a good thing. So and uh, you know these are not inexpensive shoes, right? Five hundred and sixty dollars, six hundred and ten dollars. That's a lot of money to pay for a pair of shoes. It should represent all the things that you want in a shoe. Okay? 
Um, so the quality of the leather is very good. Uh, the quality of the craftsmanship on both of these is very good. The question is really gets down to the choices that they make. Uh, the fudging, that, that's a choice, right? That, that's purely there. The, the, do they use uh, the small broguing versus the large broguing? Um, you know, is, it, is it quite as narrow? Do they have the lace structure so that it's actually uh, artfully designed or are they just doing things there where it's a straight hole? Um, that type of thing. If we look at the, um, the lining of the shoe, this is another area where you can actually feel a difference when you're looking at higher end shoes. The lining is usually made with, you know, a high end vegetable tanned um, top full grain leather, not, not top grain, full grain leather. And so you, when you feel it here, you can feel this is really, really good leather. There really isn't a discernible difference between the inside and the outside of the shoe. Um, now, when you go to the Crockett and Jones and you feel it, it is the same thing. Right. Now, this can be really important because when you your feet perspire and your feet perspire a lot, right? They say that it's about a cup of perspiration per foot per day. Okay, that gets soaked into that leather. If that leather is really, really high quality and really breathes very, very well, then that moisture will wick away from your feet, and you'll be able to um, have the shoes last for a long time. Um, if that is cloth. Okay, and you know there are some some shoes that are out there where you can um, save a lot of money because you get a cloth lining instead of a leather lining. I don't recommend that because that cloth will rot. Okay, because your your foot perspiration just you know just bleeds it dry. I mean it's terrible. So I, I would be very very cautious about um, trying to save money uh, by by changing the lining of a shoe. But but I have seen that I've I've seen it online and, and that is definitely something to uh, to think about. So, um, you know, when we look at the actual insoles themselves, okay, um, this has the sock lining. It has the genuine, uh, genuine leather on the um, actual insole. And they are both Goodyear welted. Um, so that insole is, uh, you know, glued um, or is sewn to a gemming, which is glued to the bottom of the insole, right? So, um, and the welt is sewn to the, to the gemming. So that is uh, definitely, um, going to be consistent for both pairs. Even the hand welt um, uh, on the Crockett & Jones is Goodyear welted. And that is good, right? That means that they are um, uh, they can be uh, uh, repaired easily. Um, and uh, once you, you take the soles off and you put a soles on, uh, if you go to a cobbler who, who reuses the same holes, uh, the shoe can last forever. Uh, what you'll see, and, and I don't know about Crockett and Jones or Loke, so I, I want to be clear about that, but what I've seen in a lot of American manufacturers that redo the shoes is that they strip the welts off and sew new ones onto the gemming. That can if, impact the life of the gemming, and that will impact the overall, excuse me, life of the shoe. So um, if you're really interested in, in, a, in a pair of shoes and you really want to keep it through five, six, ten resolings. Um, you really need to make sure that you go to a cobbler who, who will be able to, to use the existing holes. I've spent a lot of time on groups with cobblers where, where this is a very, very passionate topic for them. And I just thought I'd share that as well. Now, if you look at the insole here, the insole does not say uh, that it's genuine leather, um, but uh, it does look and feel uh, the same as the insole on the other shoe. So just uh, for, uh, for, for, for purpose there. Now, um, the one thing I will say is on the trees, the trees for Crockett and Jones are very, very nice. Uh, they are considerably more expensive. I think the trees on the, uh, the Lokes were 40 pounds um, and the trees for the Crockett and Jones um, are um, 65 or 70 pounds. Um, so they are expensive. These are hand grade and I bought these with the hand grade pair of shoes that I have. What's interesting about these is that if you put your hand here, um, there is a little bit of give right in this area on the hand grade um, shoe tree. On the mainline shoe tree from Crockett and Jones, there's no give at all. So I took the mainline shoe trees and I put them into the hand grade shoes because uh, they're hole cuts and I really don't want them to wrinkle. So um, for what it's worth, okay? So um, these are the little games we play with ourselves as we, uh, as we look at the shoes. Um, from a design perspective, um, this, has a, uh, a relatively short heel. And how does that compare? I think the heel is about the same. Okay, so yeah, 
it's it's a little bit shorter, but that's not significant. When I did a video um, uh, before on uh, the heel with this compared to the trickers, the trickers was significantly longer. But here, this is uh, this is relatively close. And um, again, just looking at the waist, um, you look at the wear, and the wear. Um, you know, these are in the baseline of wear, right? This is where a shoe is broken in and you're wearing it and it's not close to being worn down, either of them. Um, and they both look very, very good, okay? So they're both holding up really well. You can see from the, the heels that they're, they're wearing um, pretty well, okay? So what makes it a better shoe, all right? Um, as we look at it, um, the... Uh, you can say that the clicking is a little different um, with uh, with Loke. Um, they spent some time on their top of the line shoe, right? And keep in mind the Cargett and Jones is not the top of the line shoe, but they spent some time doing the clicking in order to be able to have like a single um, heel counter that goes around the entire shoe. Now they 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 did have to do a seam at the bottom, okay? Um, but that's something that's not as important to Crockett and Jones. Crockett and Jones just says, no, nah, we're not going to do that. We're going to slap on two, okay? Crack and Jones makes a lot of shoes. Loke makes a lot of shoes. Crack and Jones makes a lot of shoes, okay? Um, these guys were were pushing out 600,000 shoes a year in the 60s. I mean, a long time ago. So, um, you know, th they make a lot of shoes and they probably don't take the time in order to cut the, the heel counter so that they're perfect fits for each last. I don't have a problem with that, but that is a difference. So I wanted to call that out. Um, as we look at um, uh, other areas, I think when we get into the measurement phase, um, you'll be able to see some some differences there. But overall, you know, I think it gets down to style. Okay, um, when I'm wearing dress shoes, um, I'm wearing a suit. I, I usually want it to have um, a really really good solid look. I am usually want from a style perspective to have a little bit sleeker look on my shoes. And I think that the Crockett and Jones really delivers that. I think that this is more of your typical rounded shoe. And I think that it's um, just a little bit less. Now, is it 105 pounds less? In my mind, yeah, it kind of is. If I had to, if I had to look at the two store in a store and I only could buy one, okay, um, and I had the extra 105 pounds, I would buy the Crockett and Jones. I love this shoe, okay? and I want to be absolutely clear. Uh, Loke makes a great shoe. This is a fantastic shoe. This is one of the shoes that passes. I can wear it for 20 hours a day, and it does not hurt my feet. Okay, test, and that is a big deal to me. The Crockett and Jones is better. Okay, uh, my feet don't hurt with this, no matter how long I wear it. I feel like I have excellent arch support in this, no matter how long I wear it. I could run in these shoes, okay? I don't want to run in these shoes, okay? And I know why on earth would I run in the shoes? I don't want to uh, from, from that perspective, right? But, um, but I could, um, they're, they're that comfortable. Um, they really are, um, you know, one of the best shoes in, in my arsenal of, uh, in terms of comfort, um, in terms of wearability. Um, I, I candidly, I, I really like the style better. This was my first introduction into a chisel toe that actually had the rise on the side that I've talked so much about in my videos. I really, really like this. And I view this as being, um, you know, one of the shoe by which all the others are measured. So that is my thoughts. I'm interested to hear yours. Um, and, and no, do I like it as much as the Gaziano and Girling? No, do I like it as much as George Cleverly? It's a lot closer, but no, but it is a very, very, very good shoe. And um, for me to be able to say that it takes the, the cake when it comes to my Lokes, um, that's a big deal too. So thanks for watching. I'm interested in your feedback. Let me know what you think and have a wonderful day. So by the numbers, we don't want to miss out on this. The Loke has a much higher stitch density, uh, one and a half stitches per centimeter more. Uh, when we look at the waist, the Loke is a little bit ahead with six and a half compared to seven. Uh, so it isn't necessarily visible, but there is a difference when you measure. But Loke has a seven and a half centimeter heel, and the heel on the CJ is actually smaller. So that's a little different. Of course, when we get to that sole, sole stitch density, they're both very, very good at three stitches per centimeter.